When it comes to small sports sedans, the Germans have dominated for decades with well-known names like M3 and C63. These are the type of cars that are tire scorchers on a racetrack or a back road, but still have enough luxury and practicality that you can justify using them as your daily driver. For the past few years though, this segment's been under attack from an American contender. It's the Cadillac ATS-V, and like the larger, more expensive and more powerful CTS-V, it's here to prove that a car built in Michigan can compete with the Germans on the world stage. After all, the ATS-V's got a really powerful bi-turbocharged V6 up front, it's got trick magnetic suspension, and Brembo brakes all around. On paper, that sounds like the perfect recipe for a world-class sports sedan. How does it look? I really like the sharp-edged, modern looks of the ATS sedan, and amping it up with the V-Series treatment only makes the car look more thrilling. The big wheels, functional vents and wings and spoilers and flared fenders all telegraph this car's serious potential. It's a great looking car that manages to walk the line between flaunting its performance credentials and flying under the radar. I love it, especially with this red contrasting against all the black accents. Anyone in the know will instantly recognize the ATS-V as a serious machine. How's the storage? By the numbers, the ATS-V's trunk is on the small side for this segment. But I think the most frustrating thing about this trunk is just how narrow it is compared to the width of the car overall. Now, the good news is you can easily fold down the back seats to gain space for larger items. But compared to some BMW and Mercedes sports sedans, this isn't the biggest trunk you're going to find. Likewise, things are a little bit cramped up front. This center console cubby space is adequate for small items and houses two USB ports, but this hidden one under the center stack is really only big enough for phones or iPods. You do get two cup holders though, and average sized door pockets to handle all your hydration needs. Is it roomy? There's lots of space and easy adjustment for the driver and passenger. These Power Recaro seats have tons of adjustment, and you can tweak the lumbar and bolstering to ensure that you fit snugly for performance driving, or have more comfort for the everyday slog to work. Legroom and headroom measurements fall behind the ATS-V's rivals. The headliner is scalloped above the back seat, so my head just about fits when I sit upright, but the door opening is narrow and the roofline is low. Also, as in the larger Cadillac CTS, the rear seat cushions aren't long enough to cover this protrusion that hits the back of my legs. How does the interior feel? This is a nice interior overall, and I do really like a lot of the details like this microfiber suede on the steering wheel and shifter, the matte carbon fiber and so on. But when you look around, there's a lot of different materials in here. On the door panels, for instance, there's so many different designs and materials all mashed one after the other, it can look a little bit excessive. And like in most Cadillacs, I'm not the biggest fan of these touch sensitive controls on the center stack. Partly because the shiny black plastic picks up a ton of smudges and fingerprints, but also partly because it's just not that easy to use without taking your eyes off the road while you're driving, especially the touch sensitive volume slider, which is a real pain. Is it well equipped? Plenty of equipment comes standard on the ATS-V, including 18-inch wheels, power leather seats, push-button start, a Bose sound system, and many other goodies. And the option list extends to all manner of features like HID headlights, remote start, navigation, a color head-up display, and so on. Of course, lots of those add-ons cost extra. On this car, for instance, the carbon black package that includes, unsurprisingly, lots of dark accents inside and out, costs $7,800. The sunroof is a $1,000 option. Painting the brake calipers this gold instead of the default gray costs 600 bucks, and the performance data recorder video system is $1,600. And then there's a couple of other luxury features that add up to a total of $15,395 in options on this car. Perhaps the coolest standard feature of all though is free driver training. Anyone who buys an ATS-V or CTS-V gets two days of free instruction at the Cadillac V Performance Academy Center at Spring Mountain near Las Vegas. Hey, if you're buying a high-performance car, you may as well learn to drive it to its full potential. How's the infotainment system? All the on-screen buttons are big and legible, so it's easy to use this infotainment system while driving. Neat features include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, XM weather and traffic information, Pandora radio integration, navigation, and the performance data recorder. That system, the PDR, can take videos as you drive and overlay data from your track day experience. 
The only real letdown is the aforementioned volume slider, and also there's no physical control for tuning the radio. But on the other hand, the steering wheel mounted buttons work really well for doing both functions, and they're easy to use when you're driving. Is it a good daily driver? Personally, I think the ATS-V is just fine as a daily driver. But that's because I'm 28 and have a high tolerance for performance cars. The truth is the clutch is a little bit heavy, the shift is a little bit heavy, the steering's a little bit heavy. It's clearly much more aggressive than a standard Cadillac ATS. What I will say though is that there are features to mitigate that. Active noise cancellation is standard and in touring mode it's surprisingly quiet. And the magnetic ride control suspension when you put it in touring mode is actually pretty compliant over bumpy roads like the ones here in Detroit. Is it fun to drive? Yes, it is a ton of fun to drive. So let's start with the numbers. Uh, up front, it's a 3.6 litre bi-turbocharged V6. You get 464 horsepower, 445 pound-feet of torque. Cadillac says that's enough to hit 60 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds and continue on to a top speed of 189 miles an hour. This car also has performance traction management, which is an electronic system that lets me pick the driving mode I want, whether it's a wet rainy day or a dry racetrack, and then it adjusts the electronically controlled rear differential and the traction control to meet out grip as best as possible. It's unbelievable how well this car puts down power. Now, in full disclosure, this isn't on its factory summer tires at the moment. We've got Bridgestone Blizzak winters just because it's really cold in Detroit. But even like that, this car is so well suited to meeting out all that power and torque at all times. Again, this magnetic ride control suspension is just fantastic because it's somewhat compliant when you're in touring mode, but in sport and track, it's so taut and so precise. This car is really predictable. It goes exactly where I point it. There's no roll or squat or dive. It's a ton of fun and just really, really phenomenally grippy everywhere. How's the fuel economy? With this manual transmission, the Cadillac ATS-V returns 17 miles per gallon city and 23 on the highway. And of course, that's on premium gas. Those figures are pretty much on par with the competition, but as with most turbocharged engines, the harder you drive, the more dramatically this engine's thirst increases. I haven't often seen more than 17 or 18 miles per gallon this week. How much is it? The ATS-V sedan starts at around $61,000, which is a little cheaper than its two German rivals. And if you want the ATS-V coupe, you'll pay $63,000. This particular test car with all the options we talked about before rings in at just over $77,000. That's not at all an unreasonable amount to spend on a performance car like this. It wouldn't take much work with the options list to get a BMW or a Mercedes rival to similar prices. What are the negatives? I like this car a lot, but there are two things that stand out to me. The first is that the exhaust note isn't the most exciting. Now, don't get me wrong, it's plenty loud when you're driving hard, but it's just not as characterful as, say, the sound of a Mercedes-AMG C63. And as I've touched on already, the interior is pretty cramped, especially in the back seat and the trunk. Now, if you're only buying this car for performance and to go to the racetrack, maybe you don't care, but a lot of people might buy a car like this to drive every day, and in that case, interior room matters. Who should buy it? The Cadillac ATS-V is for drivers who put a serious priority on performance. From front to back, it's been designed to give you the most thrills possible out on public roads and the most ferocious lap times possible on the track. So why buy it over its established German competition? Well, you can still get a manual transmission, which you can't in the Mercedes, and I think it's got better steering feel and just a much more involving character overall than the BMW. And plus, the ATS-V is a newcomer in this class. Choosing it is an iconoclastic choice that kind of says, I'm not in this just for the badge, I'm here for the performance. If it were my money, this is definitely the sports sedan that I'd want to take home.